This video is sponsored by Dashlane. Dashlane is an all-in-one tool that you will need to protect your privacy online and to stay safe on the internet. Dashlane helps you manage your passwords, credit card details, etc. by providing a secure environment for you. You can save your passwords and credit card details, address information, etc. on Dashlane and no one except you can get access to your data. Dashlane can then automatically fill in your credentials on different websites, saving you loads of time. Dashlane also got a lots of other features like a built-in VPN to stay safe while browsing the internet, dark web monitoring which checks if your personal data has been compromised on the dark web and notifies you accordingly. You can try Dashlane for free at dashlane.com slash techraj. If you want to upgrade to the premium version, you can use the code techraj to get additional 10% off on your purchase. So make sure you check it out. The link will be in the description below. So my internet connection is broken the other day and all of a sudden, I did not know what to do with my life anymore. So I was playing this uh, Google Chrome dinosaur game which gets activated when you could not connect to the internet and when you're using Google Chrome. And it is a good game to kill time. But I just wanted to have a little more fun rather than just playing the game. So I was thinking, what if I can make the game play by itself? That would be cool, right? I mean, it did sound cool to me that time and I think it's pretty cool guys. So yeah, as I said, I did not have internet connection. I couldn't play Valorant. So I thought, why not do it? So initially the first thought that came into my mind is to make use of image recognition. So basically what I was thinking is, you know, for every time interval, I wanted to take a screenshot automatically, a screenshot of the game screen, and then take that image, process that image, and then uh, find the location of the T-Rex and then check if there is any obstacle closer to the T-Rex and make a movement based on the obstacle. If it's a, like a cactus, just jump, or if it's a bird, duck under it. So something like that. And I can achieve all of this by writing a simple Python program. I can, you know, use the pillow library in Python to manage this image recognition and stuff. And then I can use Py Auto GUI to simulate user input to the game. But if you really think about it, it's not really efficient because this process involves taking screenshot of the game screen very frequently, like let's say every 30 to 40 milliseconds or so, and then processing that image, finding out if there is any obstacle closer to the dinosaur, and then simulating the input via the keyboard to the game. So it's not really that efficient, and there is definitely a more efficient way to approach this. And that is by this running some JavaScript in the console window of the browser itself. Now we know that the game is running completely on JavaScript. It is running on the browser, so we have access to the source code of the game we can change it the way we want. For example, we can actually grab the function that is triggered every time you hit the obstacle and we can change the function you know, to something empty and then what happens? You basically become immortal. Even though if you hit any obstacle, nothing happens. You, the game continues. So yeah, we can do a lot of cool stuff with it, but, but all I wanted to see is the gameplay by itself. I just wanted to automate the game. So as I said, the game is running on the browser, which is on my computer. So which means I have access to the runtime memory, the runtime variables of the game. So I can tweak them through the console window of my browser. You know, I can write some JavaScript and I can do stuff. Basically, I can automate it and make the game play by itself. So this is what I did, watch and enjoy. Initially, I saved the whole page and opened it up in Sublime Text to check out the source code of the game. There are three types of obstacles as written in the source code. A small cactus, a large cactus, and a... I don't know how to spell that, so let me just call it the bird. Each obstacle has its own properties like the width, height, minimum speed, x position, and y position. But for the bird, the y position is not constant. It is either 100 or 75 or 50. This explains why the bird is sometimes on the ground, sometimes at the height of the dinosaur, and sometimes above the dinosaur. The obstacles are generated randomly and they are stored in an array named obstacles. As soon as you overcome an obstacle, it is deleted from the array. So at any point of time, the array obstacles contain obstacles that are currently on the horizon of the game and that are yet to be faced by the dinosaur. Also, the dinosaur's location is always constant. It doesn't move, it just flaps its legs. It is the obstacles that are actually moving towards the dinosaur. So here is my idea. Keep checking the obstacles array to see if it is closer to the dinosaur based on the X position of the obstacle. And if it is close, find out the type of obstacle. If it's either a small cactus or a large cactus, the only option we have is to jump. But if it's a bird, we need to either jump over it if it's closer to the ground or duck under it if it's over the dinosaur. 
this is the simplest approach I came up with. So let's write some JavaScript to achieve this. First I will get the current runner instance so I can extract certain runtime variables like the obstacles array from it. Now I'll get the obstacles array and find out which is the closest to the dinosaur. It is always going to be the one at the zeroth index of the array. If it's either a small cactus or a large cactus, the action that we need to perform is jump. If it's the bird, we need to either jump or duck based on its Y position. If the Y position is 50 or 75, we will duck and if it's 100, we will jump. So now we know what action to be performed based on the obstacle and its corresponding Y position. It is now time to actually perform that action. Since we are going to run this JavaScript in the browser's console, we cannot simulate user input to the game. It is simply not allowed. So we need to make the dinosaur jump or duck internally with the game functions itself. After reading the source code, I figured out that the start jump function makes the dinosaur jump and set duck of true will make the dinosaur duck. So we will just use these predefined internal functions to perform our actions. In order to decide whether to trigger the action or not, we need to check if the obstacle is close enough to the dinosaur so that it can actually perform the action. So I'll just write a condition that if the distance between the dinosaur and the obstacle is less than 100, then trigger the action that is either jump or duck based on the obstacle. And we already know what obstacle it is and what action to perform. So I just have to call the internal function to jump or to duck. Now I'll make this code run for every time interval. Let's say I will make it run for every 50 or 100 milliseconds. And there comes the first version of our code. Now let me actually try running it in the browser's console window and let's see the results. Alright, it's obviously not perfect. You can notice that the game speed keeps increasing constantly. So the dinosaur will eventually crash because the number of obstacles and their speed will increase eventually. You can definitely make the code more efficient, but hey, I just did it overnight and I'm doing this only because my internet is broken. So I just cheated. Well, kind of. I simply made the game run at a constant speed of 9 by using an internal game function. And I also reconfigured the obstacles in such a way that the minimum gap in between them will be 150. This increases the chance that our dinosaur will survive more time because the speed is constant and the obstacles are also separated by a minimum distance. So I kind of cheated here because I tweaked the game a little bit to make the obstacles a little easier to play. I tested the code and it worked pretty well. I crossed 5000 score in my first attempt, but hey, I should say that this is not at all consistent because the nature of the game is random. Sometimes you may get a harder series of obstacles earlier in the game and the code may fail. However, I do believe that it can be improved a lot for better consistency. But hey, my internet is back now and I really don't care about the game anymore. 